Wilsey. Hey, I'm Shane McGalley. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Arrowlings Podcast Project. Tonight we're going to talk about a bunch of things that stop writers from finishing. Um, it's one of my favorite sayings, you know, finish things. I always encourage everybody to focus and finish. Um, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things that are stuff that stop people from actually um, reaching their goals and being a published author. I guess I'll start. We'll, we'll go around as we, uh, we hit these. Um, I'll start simple. Um, I was just having a conversation this week with somebody who is uh, uh, an unpublished author, and they're struggling with how much it costs to, you know, uh, get a very professional cover and have a professional edit done. Um, somebody that's, you know, doing it on the side and when they realize that the costs associated with it um, is a toe stub for them. Shay, what about you? Yeah. Um, I know authors who work very hard and they go to writing meetings and they take critique well and they, you know, they're, they're motivated to write. They make time for it. But they work on the same story, the same novel, for years and years and years. And um, you know, this could be this could be something where they're you know they're they're worried about getting their opening right, or they're worried about you know they think this thing is not strong enough, whatever. But the problem is that they never get better because when you have the same canvas and you're throwing paint on that canvas. You don't have the room to, to explore and grow your talent. So I would say that even doing everything else right, if you're working on the same project, you will not be successful. You need to move on to the next project and the next and the next. Yeah, yeah I, I think agree that, with that. that there, there's a lot of reasons that people get in that situation. Dave, what, what do you got on your list? Uh, another one I've seen is uh, I have seen people go through writing group and uh, they're writing their story, they're working on their craft, they're, uh, uh, they're pushing chapters through the writing group, they're taking critique well, and they never revise. They actually never do a second draft. And I, I think it's related to they're afraid to take the next step, or they're not sure how to fix it. So it's easier to work on the next thing than it is to actually try to polish off the story that they've got. I think fear is a very large category that um, you can put a lot of items in that bucket. Maybe we'll just uh, stick with that uh, temporarily. Um, There's some people that fear bad reviews. You know, if, if, you know, they don't know what they would do with themselves if they got a one star review. Um, there's people that fear rejection you know, if their book uh, isn't, the, you know, the magnum opus that uh, they thought it was. There's a lot of a lot of fear out there associated with pushing the button to press publish because then it's out of your hands and your control over it is um, relinquished to the universe. So I'm sure that we could probably come up with a large uh, list of fear based items. Yeah. Um, but in some cases, the one I mentioned can it can indeed be fear, uh, but it can also be somebody who who just kind of craves the attention of being in a writing group and 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 working on a story. But then they just don't. And, and part of it's fear, but they they like the the camaraderie of being in the writing group, but they just won't go to the next level ever. Yeah, I uh, I have actually known several people. They like the idea of being an author, but they don't like the amount of work it actually takes to actually write a novel. Um, and, and that can be a um, stumbling block for people, too. Jay, what else you got? This is kind of a, a controversial one for, for me to say because, um, you know, I, I was always, uh, when I started out in my career, I always said, you know, my goal is traditional publication, 
and that's what I'm working for. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give up until I get that. I'm not going to do other other ways of public publishing. But I will say that one thing that can keep people from being successful is when they have a certain goal that is really high, but they won't accept like even good success below that for other projects. So I guess an example I would say is maybe it's a short story author and they say, man, I want to be published by the New Yorker. Like the New Yorker is it. If I don't get published by the New Yorker, then I'm going to just not, you know, whatever. And then they don't end up getting published by the New Yorker, but like, you know, maybe a, a state paper would really like to publish their pa to publish their piece or something like that. So um, I, I would, I'm not saying give up on your dreams. I'm saying if someone wants to publish that short story in another press, take that and write another story for the New Yorker and keep trying, keep trying to get into the New Yorker, but also have incremental successes and steps where you're moving towards that goal. Yeah. In incremental goals that you can reach before you reach the, your, your ultimate goal. I don't mean, don't it, give up. Keep on to your dreams. Yeah, but, but, but I agree but, with you. Don't give up. But if your yeah. goal is to win an Oscar and that's the only thing you'll accept or right. a Hugo award, it's like, well, you know, somewhere in there, you've got to walk before you run. Right. Yep. So Dave, go. Premature novelitis. Right. There's lots of different writing skills. There's uh, there's the basic writing of paragraphs. We pretty much can all do that. You know, there's crafting a scene where a good with a good beginning and a, a middle and an end that leads you know directly into other scenes. There's plotting at novel length. All of these things are skills, and you don't have them to start out with. So when you decide that you're going to write, you're going to start off by writing a novel, right? And not only are you going to start off by writing a novel, but you're unhappy with what you've seen in the science fiction field. So you're going to write the most convoluted, um, uh, Kafkaesque, philosophical-based novel that you can imagine. And it's going to take the science fiction um, field by storm. But there is no way in hell that I have even the chops to, to write that. And, and you certainly don't either, right? And so you you founder basically on the the size and scope and scale of this great science fiction novel that you want to write that you simply don't have the skills for yet, and you haven't given yourselves and, and this is related to what uh, Shay said before you haven't given yourself those intermediate goals you're not willing to learn some skills on short stories or novelettes or or other things you're going right for the Hugo winning novel you know lots of authors just never get past that yep. boom. They're done. The next one I would list is the practical things. Uh, things like finding time because people's lives are complicated. Full-time jobs, maybe a pile of small children, um, a complicated marriage or whatever. Um, uh, priorities can often um, prevent uh, novelists from actually being able to complete a no novel. In, in any kind of uh, reasonable time frame. And, um, and maybe you also add on that all the distractions, you know, the internet, you know, Netflix, you know, pets and, you know, spouses and um, all the other practical things that um, intrude on uh, writer's time. Um, I, I, I would put that as one. Shay, what do you got? So now this episode is not just about what prevents an author from finishing, but what, what prevents an author from being successful, right? Yeah, we can we can do that. Okay, because um, I would say what what prevents authors from being successful in a genre that I work in often, which is young adult, is when uh, older authors are tone deaf to their audience. I know a lot of people in young adult that think that they can be young adult authors that preach to kids and say, you know, like, I I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach the, this generation a lesson and so-and-so or whatever, or, um, and it really doesn't go over well with the audience. I'm not going to read it. You read your, your book. Um, I'm not saying that, that there's any sort of ageism in young adult fiction, because one of the greatest young adult fiction authors is John Green, who is by no means a Gen Z or millennial, but he respects his audience because he listens and he is immersed in youth culture. 
And so he, he, he has won the respect and his books sound authentic. So um, young adult authors will not be successful unless they cultivate an actual respect for young adults and young readers and issues that they face and the way they speak and the way that they relate to the world. Um, and if you're not really serious about that and you're just out to teach something, uh, you will not be successful. I think you could expand that to any audience. If you ignore your audience, True. You just preach at them, it's, it's never going to work. I can see that, yeah. Yeah. Dave, what else you got? Well, the next one's uh, what I call the, uh, the beanbag chair syndrome. So you're an aspiring writer, you're in writing group, and uh, you're writing uh, as best you can, and you're working on your craft, and you get uh, 10 different critiques on your story. One says, do this. Somebody says, do that. Somebody else says, I think your protagonist should be a man instead of a woman, et cetera, et cetera. And so you take all the advice, and you keep changing your story, and, and uh, you know, and you can't seem to decide what your story is. It's a beanbag chair. It just keeps changing shape, but it doesn't get better. Uh, and in fact, if anything, it gets worse because somewhere in there, by listening to all of the advice, you've lost the original thing that made it yours, that made it interesting. And it's one of those things where you have to have some vision of what your story is and be able to take the critiques that you get and go, that's great, but it doesn't apply to my story. Um, that, oh, that that would be key to my story. You, you have to have... have you have to learn some judgment about what advice to take and what not uh, with regard to your story. And some people just don't seem to kind of get that, or they don't seem to really uh, figure out who perhaps within the group is the type of person who's giving them the, the type of advice that's right for their story. And it's not always the same people that might be right for different writers within the, the group, if you know what I mean. All right. The beanbag chair syndrome. What's your story? My next one, um, I guess it would, the umbrella category would be perfectionism. Uh, it cripples a lot of authors. Um, they get into uh, self-editing, revision hell, and they can never get out of it because um, they have a feeling that they cannot let it go until it's perfect. And without ever realizing that nothing's ever going to be perfect. It's you know, that, that's actually impossible. And so what they do is they end up in uh, total revision hell and they can never get out of it. That speaks to what you were talking about before, Shay, about people that end up working on the same book for years or a decade, decade or whatever and uh, never get to the next step where they um, can get on to the next part. And I think that that can include the, you know, the story, it can include the actual spelling, grammar, and punctuation. It could even be the formatting of the interior of the book. People get obsessed about that to uh, uh, make it as good as they can. And it cripples a lot of authors. Yeah, my next one is that, uh, so I think successful writers have to have uh, both an, an ability to write, <laughs> you know, the skill to actually write, and two, good ideas, you know, good plots. I know writers who are very skilled uh, with their prose, but they don't have very original ideas or plots. And I know writers who have very original ideas and plots who have very troubled prose. And both are equally detrimental and devastating to your success. So I think that recognizing that you cannot survive with just one if you say, oh my gosh, I have the best idea in the world, it's going to make millions, listen to this. But then you don't really work on your craft. Um, you know, or being like a really great uh, poetic, you know, prose writer, but you you don't really spend a lot of time figuring out who you are and what your spark is and what your, your passion is to come up with that really powerful story. Um, you're going to be unsuccessful. So recognizing that balance and being able to work at both is what makes also successful. And if you don't have it, you won't be successful. Dave? Well, how can, how can I say this? Um, I think that you get better at your craft by pushing your boundaries. 
Um, and so I see some writers who, who push boundaries and you can see them getting better by leaps and bounds. And I see other writers that they just seem to write the same thing all the time. The, it feels like, you know, the same characters from uh, central casting. Uh, it feels like the same action beats. It seems like the same basic plot lines. Um, and you just don't see them. They're not going for like the emotional depth. They're not going for, you know, they're not reaching out to try to pull your heart out. So they're not, uh, you know, they're not making you feel the romance in the story. They're just, they're not pushing their limits. Um, and it's hard to get better. And, and some of that has to do with, for instance, writing. Uh, if you write one short story per year, you're probably not going to get better at a high rate of speed. So there, there has to be some kind of balance where you're you're writing a significant amount and you're pushing your limits, or otherwise you're not going to achieve your dream, your dreams. And that's just the facts of being a writer. Yep. So we'll go around one more time. Um, my last thing I would say is um i i know several writers that are very emotional um writers and they feel like they can't write unless they're inspired and uh waiting for the muse is a trap i i don't recommend it at all um a lot of people that do that you know suffer from all kinds of things like depression and burnout, stress, anxiety, apathy, and all of those things, if you're waiting to be inspired um, and only write when you're inspired, um, it's it's not going to work. Um, I am a huge proponent of discipline. Write when, you know, write when you, uh, you do it like a job and uh, because actually it kind of is. Um, so um, discipline instead of waiting for the muse would be uh, uh, my last thing. Jay, what's yours? Yeah, so I'm having a hard time picking my last thing, but I think I'll settle on, um, you know, what one of my favorite virtues, if not my favorite virtue, uh, is courage. And if you do not have courage, you will not be successful as a writer in many regards. You know, the courage to... Um, to, to take something and, and press publish, uh, the courage to write about something that's really authentic and really powerful, but is really close to something that was traumatizing or that was a you know very personal to you, and you're like, oh man, I don't really know if all people reading this, that kind of thing. But th those authors who uh, publish it anyway and say, you know, judgment be damned, are the ones that are the really powerful ones that get uh, that get read. So you need courage to just simply do it, but you also need courage in generating your material and, and being willing to write about dark stuff um, in, a, in a unique way that, that will even mark. So courage, courage, my friends. Dave, close her up. Well, uh, for me, uh, I like pushing myself out of ruts and, and forcing myself to explore new corners. So I'll do things like uh, write for a themed anthology, whether I, I uh, and sometimes I get my story accepted and, and sometimes I miss the deadline, but I write the story anyway. Uh, it pushes me into areas that I might not otherwise um, write about. Uh, and it's another way of, of pushing my limits. Um, also, uh, writing exercises, uh, especially in like your writing group or uh, in, in a local uh, convention workshops. Uh, all of those things, I, I think, are things that can help you with your craft, uh, push you into different directions and trying different things than you're trying right now. And all of those things are ways to push your boundaries and help you get better. Well, all you guys that are budding authors out there, I, ho I hope this uh, gave you a little bit of insight as to uh, what's keeping you from press and publish as well. So I think that that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.